Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take just a slight step back in our build an ISP video, and I'm going to introduce the fiber ISP glossary. And this glossary will grow over time as we get to the different videos, I'll have to keep adding stuff to this and we're, we'll have a huge, huge glossary uh, at the end, which I think is going to be great. And people can let me know in the videos, hey, you should add this, you should add that. So somebody actually brought this up that um, I was using a lot of acronyms in the videos and not everybody understands what that is. And I totally agree with that. Just like uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm waiting on just a, a couple things, uh, some firmware things, and then we're going to do like a whole putting it together video. But I'm actually going to go ahead and break this down even further. We're going to look at each individual piece of equipment that's in the rack. We're going to look at all the different cables. We're going to look at all the different CPE or the customer premise equipment. And I'm really going to take it down to a nuts and bolts level. I'm even going to do an entire video on power levels uh, when it comes to fiber. So it's going to be a good chance for me to actually type this up and I'm going to throw the, uh, the little, uh, device on there. That's going to, you know, let me see in front of the camera so that I don't say, uh, so much and that we get the teleprompter. And so that we get to the point, uh, there we go. But I, because I want to make it concise and, and deliver more value, you can take a lot of what we're doing in this video and, also apply it to fixed wireless was it which once we get this up and going we're actually going to go ahead and add fixed wireless to our isp and talk about that and this right now the the core of this network is all ubiquity the fixed wireless for now will all be ubiquity and so we're going to see how it all comes together but what i want to do let's go over what i've got for the glossary so far for the things that I've covered. Like I said, the next video we're going to get into, we'll start at the router. We'll go to the, the OLT. We'll look at the WDM. We're going to look at all the CPE devices and I've got something special that I can't wait to show you when it comes to that. So then we will get into the configuration. By the time we get there, I'm thinking that this firmware thing that I'm waiting on should probably be cleared up. So Let's take a look at our glossary so far. So when we start talking about fiber networks and delivering and building a service provider network, there are a couple of different networks. There's active optical network, which is AON, and then there's PON or passive optical network. And when we tack the G on the front of PON, now it becomes G PON, right? Let's go back to active optical network. So that's basically point to point where the customer has a dedicated fiber strand uh, directly to the, the core equipment that is not shared with anyone else. Now, obviously we're sharing bandwidth where it's aggregated, but aggregated, aggregated, but we're not sharing it at the, like on the, the line or at a, a splitter or anything like that. <clears throat> so, we're not going to be doing an active optical network. We are doing a passive optical network. And also some of these, I may be oversimplifying these a little bit. So if you have specific questions, make sure that you're listening, listing those or asking those questions down in the description or that you're heading on over to community.willyhow.com and you are asking your questions over there. Ask them on the video as well. That way, everybody else that's not in the community can see them and we'll start compiling you know, Q&A and things like that. So GPON is Gigabit Passive Optical Network. That's what most people are familiar with when it comes to fiber to the home, fiber to the premise. So uh, GPON is an asymmetrical. And so what asymmetrical is, is usually your download speed is faster than your upload speed. So uh, your cable systems from Comcast, uh, Charter, you know, those are also asymmetrical, right? 100 megs down, 30 megs up. So GPON is going to have a faster download than, than it is the upload. And the customer comes off of a splitter. And then off of that splitter, there's a single strand that's backhauled to our OLT. And we're getting to what OLT is there, right? So when we look at that splitter, I'll, we'll do some up-close 
footage of that. But there are 32 strands of fiber that split off of one strand of fiber. And we're able to to do that because of all of the equipment. It's, it's almost like magic when it works correctly. XGPON is next in line. So that's 10 gigabit passive optical network. And it's the same as GPON, but it's 10 gig. And it is still asymmetrical. Everything that we're talking about, this equipment back here can do PON, GPON. And the next thing is XGS PON. So anytime, usually, we stick an S in there, it starts in when we're talking about networking, it stands for symmetrical. So the XGS PON, which this equipment can do, is 10 gig, 10 gig symmetrical passive optical network. So 10 gig upload and download. The OLT is your optical line terminal, and we have the XG OLT. So we can do that to the 10 gig and the symmetrical. So it's it's the central device that connects to the ONT, the ONU, which we're getting to here shortly, to provide the connection to the end user. Kind of think of that as like our, our core, right? So you have a cabinet out in a neighborhood. You've got one of these in there, or maybe it's at the CO, and subscribers are coming back to that. A lot of people build their networks differently. There's a lot of commonalities, but where we stash equipment, people sometimes get creative. So your ONT or your ONU is your optical network terminal your optic or your optical network unit, and that is the end user device that connects to the OLT or the optical line terminal to provide the actual connection for the end user or the subscriber. And you could also consider this CPE, which is customer premise equipment. If you are in the ISP game at all, or you, you've heard of it, CPE, customer premise equipment, equipment at the customer premise. A splitter, a splitter takes a single, and now this is a splitter in a, a pond network, it takes a single fiber, splits it out into multiple fibers. One side connects to our WDM, which we're going to talk about, or directly to the OLT, and then a split out. And in our case, it's a 32 to 1, but in GPON, you can actually go up to 64 on your split. So it comes out multiple fibers that go to the end users or the subscribers. When we're looking at fiber, there's a couple different types of fiber that we've got back here, so I need to cover this. So we've got SM or SMF, which is single mode fiber, and is most commonly uh, used for building ponds in, in our case. People who also want to do long distance transmission of fiber will use single mode. There's no deg degradation of signal, good for long distances, but is expensive and you have to be a little bit more careful when you handle it. Multimode fiber, which is a lot of you are probably familiar with that, it's good for shorter distances. So 10 gigs, you can go up to 550 meters. At 10 gigs, it's less expensive than single mode. And we typically use that for backbones and server rooms in buildings or going fiber to the desktop because it is much less expensive. And we'll look at that later on when we start looking at the prices of everything and the modules and how everything fits together. You'll notice right away a price difference between the two different types of fiber that we're dealing with. If you've been kind of following some of the posts, you'll know that this one uh, kind of hit a, a hot a hot button uh, on some of my other uh, social medias. But when we're looking at the different connectors for the fiber, we have the APC and the UPC. So the APC is the angled physical contact fiber, and it minimizes back reflection uh, using a 5 to 15 degree angle polish on the fiber end faces. The connectors are green. It's single mode fiber use only and is good for higher power levels. The UPC, and I'm going to show you all of these when we start getting into the, in, you know, when we start breaking this down in the videos. I'm going to do a whole video just on fiber. The UPC is the ultra physical contact fiber. There's zero angle. The end is rounded just a little bit, but the fiber face is supposed to have zero angle. The connectors are blue. And we can use single mode or multi-mode fiber, but we should not directly mate it with an APC. Power levels. We are going to talk, I'm going to do an entire video on the power levels and power and, and uh, level loss and, 
and things like that. So that is coming. Adapters. Adapters join unlike or like cables together. You'll see where we are using those here. The WDM that we were talking about, that's a wavelength division multiplexing device and enables the use of multiple colors or wavelengths of fiber to send data. So when you start using different colors, sending it down the same fiber, you can have multiple streams of data at the same speeds going down a single fiber. It, it almost sounds like magic, right? It's almost too good to be true. All right, so you're also going to hear us talk about asymmetrical and symmetrical. So asymmetrical in this case is when your download and your ups, upload speeds are not the same. Once again, that 100 down, 30 up. And then symmetrical is where your download and upload speeds are the same. So if you have gigabit symmetrical or, or 10 gigabit symmetrical, symmetrical means same upload and download speeds. If I forgot anything that I already talked about, I don't think I did, let me know. I'm going to leave a link to this glossary down below. I'll leave a link over on the community. So just let me know if the, you've got any more questions and we're going to start pumping these videos out on a regular basis. And I'm super excited about this. I'm really excited to actually do the speed test too here in a, in a closed environment to see what I get. And then I've also challenged some other manufacturers to see if they want to look at the equipment, you know, price to feature ratio and how well it works and see who comes out on top. So that might be something that we're doing. I don't know, you know, these sometimes companies, and I'm not saying ubiquity because when I talk to my folks over there, I think they thought it was great. But some of these other companies who are charging 10 times the the, the amount for the equipment and is saying how much better the equipment is, you you start saying, okay, we got a lab, let's do it, let's film it, let's put it out there. Sometimes they go, okay, maybe that wasn't such a great idea, right? So we'll see how that works out. If you've got any questions about this, let me know. Like I said, this glossary, I'll leave a link down below. It's going to be living, breathing, so to speak. If you've got any questions about this equipment, in general, let me know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, comment, share. Follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out the contact form on the front page. Come on over and join our community at community.willyhow.com. We're building a great community over there. And I, everybody that's over there, I, I don't have enough nice things to say about everybody that's over there. So, once again, I'm Willie. I can't wait to, to enjoy this new format of video where we're breaking these things down. I can't wait to share it with you. So come back for the next video. And as always, I'll see you then.